got an interesting car here. 2002 Saturn. No idea what model it is. Oh, it's S series. So what is this? Like S. S200 or whatever they are. But uh, check it until I came. What was on when it came in? They brought it for emissions and inspection, which I don't know why they didn't tell me it was on. But look at that. O2 heater circuit control low. Camshaft sensor circuit out of range. EGR position error. Closed performance. CC power management mode. Or engine stall. Low coolant circuit. And PCM RAM performance. Or snapshot available. No idea what any of those mean. Actually, I know what the top three mean. I'm wondering if this has like a power or ground issue. Uh, let's see, so we got that. Let's go in here. I wonder if we're going to find codes in other modules. All powertrain codes. Okay, so same module for both. Let's see, ABS. Yeah, when I see codes like that, huh, does this even, this might not even have ABS. Let's see. No, it doesn't look like it. Yeah, what is it, 2000 through, or 2002 through like 05 GMs, ABS was optional. Uh, let's see if we can, nothing. So let's see if we can, oh, we got an instrument cluster, and body control, oh. Okay, so it looks like our codes are only here. Let's see if we can, let me see if, oh, it was back there. And we'll probably only get one freeze frame. And it'll probably be one that doesn't help us. Let's see. GR position. Huh. That is a very interesting long term. I don't even know if we could trust that. 147 on the long term? It seems awfully high. And it must not let the car go into closed loop because we're at 179. Let's see. We're 179 degrees. Well, I can't quite get all these. I'll go here. Save this one. Oh, look at our fuel level. Fuel level, 834%. It says that the engine was, let's see if we can put this back up here now. Uh, let's see. So this is running for 20 minutes. Are we at idle? Oh, we're at 45 miles an hour, okay. So, that is interesting right there. I'd be really surprised. This gives me freeze frame for each one.
Oh, it does. Look at that fuel trim. Like this is reminding me of block learning integrator. This thing ran for 52 seconds. And our fuel level is at 800%. Maybe that's the whole problem. Maybe they just put eight times the amount of fuel in here somehow. Uh, I just noticed this one. The ignition voltage is 10 volts. I should probably go back and look at the other ones. They must have different data groups. The car was only off for one second. Oh, this is where it stalled. So our fuel trim was 128. I'm wondering if this is like mixing up block learn or something. Just because of the fact it says 128. Let's get a low coolant circuit. I don't know if I ever saw an old car like this. See that? This must be block learn. This is 125. I don't think all these would be messed up. I drove this car for a while though with this check engine light on because that's at 1200 miles or so since check engine light lit up. Yeah, it's weird though that the short term's like that and the long term looks like it's in block learn. Okay, guys, I'm gonna. Do some research here and then uh, I'll be back. So, guys, I'm back with the car. I ate lunch. I printed out a wiring diagram just in case I needed it. I don't have to go back in. But the heated oxygen sensor says battery voltage above 10.9 and you run it for more than 45 seconds and the condition lasts longer than half a second. So, and then it tells you why it sets. The cam sensor. This doesn't even have a cam sensor. This is using uh, like the coil pack to determine when cylinder four is that. I think it was determines when cylinder four just fired. So this, I guess, is a setup kind of like the Ecotech engine from GM. So now look at the EGR. Battery voltage had to be above 11, and it says about the duty cycle. And in this P1599, stall or near stall, uh, the computer doesn't detect any pulses from the crank sensor. Then we had this, this is the coolant temperature switch. The yeah, coolant temperature was low, condition existed for more than 30 seconds. I didn't look at the level yet. We can go look at it. And then this P1624, this is kind of cool. So I never saw this before. So the PCM can do a customer snapshot. So what you do is you press the cruise control on three times. It says it doesn't matter if it's off, on, or on, off, three times. And then it'll set uh just like a freeze frame snapshot when 
like the problem is present. It's kind of neat, but it can only do one snapshot per ignition cycle. So that was kind of cool. Don't know if I'll ever use it, but I brought up the data here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to clear the codes. I'm trying to see where the fuel level is. I wanted to see if it was like stupid high. Let's see. Because it wasn't under engine data that I saw and I didn't see it. I also didn't see it under uh, fuel and spark. I don't know if it's under EGR and misfire. see it there either. I wonder if maybe this doesn't know what the fuel level is. I know there were some GMs where there's like no fuel level in the computer. Like it just went through the gauge cluster. It's really odd. Yeah, it doesn't look like it. So I guess what we'll do is we'll clear the codes. See what comes back. Let's turn the key off. Turn it on. Guess what I'll do quick before I start it is I'll quick check the coolant level on that, make sure that's full. Let's see if we have any lights on. It looks like we have a little coolant light on. I don't see one. But I'll quick check that and then I'll come back here. Checking the coolant level right now, that is completely full. It does look like somebody might have mixed text cool with green coolant. But that's not really my problem. Let's see if we got oil on the dipstick. Oh, that is not good. That is bone dry. Guess I'll be getting some oil for this. Here's the dipstick. I don't know if you can see that. Bone dry. So we're gonna stick it in here. Look at that. Bone dry. There's not even anything on the tip. So I guess I'll be adding a lot of oil. We'll go get some oil and then we'll see how much we have to add. So guys, this thing held four quarts of oil. So we're missing 75% of the oil. One quart. It was left in the pan, and uh, I noticed that like the battery voltage right now is 12.9 with the key on. So, I'm assuming we might have a weak battery here too. So I'm gonna start it up. I'll let it run for a little bit and see if we get any codes. And we'll check our fuel trims and make sure everything looks good. Just started it. See what happens with our oxygen sensor. Looks like it's like bank two is stuck high. Oh, now it's coming down. I thought maybe it was short of the battery voltage. So guys, the car's been sitting here idling for like 10 or 15 minutes now. Our coolant temperature isn't really going up. Like it keeps, like it's going super slow. This thing should be going up a lot faster. It sets 147. To 159, and our rear oxygen sensor is just stuck at 1,107 millivolts. Oh, and now it wants to start moving a little bit, and we're still in open loop. Should have went in the closed loop by now.
think the heater might be failing on this rear one. I'm gonna take it for a ride, and see what happens. Let's see what our gauge shows. Our gauge is like three quarter. I mean a quarter. So I'll take this for a ride. I'll see what happens. So guys, hopefully you can see this. But I've been driving down the road now in the Iowa for about five minutes. It's going straight. And I think our rolling temperature is like what around 174. We're still in open loop. Front auction sensor cycling, pretty good. But it looks that doesn't look like it's cycling the full range like it's supposed to. And our rear one's just being all kinds of goofy. This thing should definitely be uh, steady or cycling by now. The cat was bad. And our dash. That's our temperature right now. So I'm not sure if this has to reach a certain temperature before it goes in closed loop. I believe GM is usually around like 150 or 160. Some of the older cars before they go into closed loop. I don't know what it is for this one. We can see like the outside temperature is pretty hot today. This thing should be heating up. We shouldn't have an issue heating anything up, even option sensors today. these auction sensors that go rich and then lean. Fuel trims are cycling and pouring up the loop. that when I was driving let me save this and I'll pause it we'll go back and look I noticed when I was driving 
that I can't make the rear oxygen sensor go lean. Let's see. over so that this line so here was a lean like you can see we're down to four millivolt now this rear one never goes down see it's at 438 438 is the lowest it'll go it'll never go lean like this thing should be going lean because this was a long D cell that I did I was off the gas and just slowing down and the front one just stays completely lean. Same with here. There's a couple spots that I did this. And the rear one should take a couple seconds or so to react because of the cat. But you can see when it goes lean this only drops down to 469. So I'm wondering if that and a combination with our coolant temperature not getting up if that's why this thing is staying in open loop and like our fuel trims they're minus 16 there let's see long term short term there's a really high one there right there so I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna exit out of this. I'm gonna go into global. Let's see if we get different information in global just to make sure. That we're actually getting right information. Let's see. I wonder how fast this is gonna be. Open loop fault. Uh, let's see. I wanted to check that too before we got out of there. Let's see current trouble codes. None. I don't have to check engine light. sensor monitoring test that failed. I wish people would offer more classes on mode 6 because I've taken some but I feel like I knew just as much when I left because I still don't understand it. Like I've looked up some of these tests like for Forge and stuff like that to see what they do in a couple of GMs. But it also seems like there's also some information that isn't available. 
report it, they'll tell you what the test is, but it doesn't really tell you what it does. PCT is detected during last drive. I remember ever seeing that. That's weird though. It's, it's going to freeze frame. Nothing. Let's go back in the current. There's nothing there. Let's go back. Change vehicle, yes. I want to go back into the car. I hate when it does this. Like you pick all this stuff and then it takes you back to the main screen anyway. I think this is an SC2 or no SL2. And now watch. I called him a few times. See now it says no vehicle, and I gotta just select what I was under before. Let's see auto engine code display current codes. Huh. So. We have the code in here. But not. But not in global. Let's see, can I even. Nothing in history. Man, last test failed. The only test. Okay, so if I go under generic functions, trouble codes, none. That is odd. So I wonder if it has to fit. I wonder if this like failed once and that's why I did it. So I guess we'll just go back underneath data. Engine data. Like this, we'll do like because yeah, I also noticed that we didn't have engine load. See, it stays at zero. Probably because it's still an open loop. So I guess when we get back to the shop, I'll test this oxygen sensor. And then, yeah, look at our engine coolant. Our engine coolant is cooling down, sitting here with the air conditioner on. And I, I don't like our battery voltage. Oh, I didn't show you guys that earlier. But our battery voltage was going down to like 13.2. And I think the lowest is up was uh, 12. The lowest I think I saw was like 12.7. see. Let's turn our lights on. We'll be testing the alternator net when we get back too. Turn the lights off. Okay guys, so head back to the shop now. And then we'll figure out why this ain't going in open loop. So guys, just sitting here at idle. Uh, we went down to like what 12.4 volt? 12.3 volts. And we were just sitting there at idle. I have nothing on but the air conditioning. So I think this might have a failing alternator too. So when we get back, we'll check the powers and grounds and 
Yeah, definitely shouldn't be going down that low at idle. battery voltage guys in here at a red light all I got is a turn signal on 12.1 volts this may be an interesting ride back so guys I'm back at the shop Odyssey battery had hooked me up with this and I told him I'd probably break it but we're gonna use this. We're gonna see. We can test this battery. This thing's actually pretty nice. I need to get some more attachments for it. Oh, uh, I'm doing this zip tie. They have uh, some cool attachments for it that you can connect right here. You can put your amp clamp, and over here, I think it's for your multimeter or something I mean not multimeter but like uh, voltage leads Let's see if we can get on this get Up. It says we're at 13.86. What's this say? 13.5, 13.4. Sorry about that, guys. There we go. 13.2. It's jumping around. This is definitely like we might have a voltage drop issue because this is like what half, almost half a volt higher. So let's see. The only thing I don't like about this is it automatically comes up asking for group 31. Uh, you know what? We might have to go back. Let's see. What's the cranking amps on this? I can't even see it. It's probably like 660. Yeah, is it going to let me go back? No. I don't want to do the system test. There we go. Okay, so it wants me to shut everything off. All accessories off. Key on. Now it wants me to start the engine. So our cranking voltage look good. This even does like a nice ripple. Okay, so now we're going to do a charging test. All loads are off. Idle voltage. Turn on loads. So we'll turn everything on. There we go, that should be everything. So that alternator load low. Oh, you know what? I didn't save. I don't think I saved the battery dropping. Oh, there we go. Look at that. All our loads are on. We're at battery voltage right now. Let's turn all these down. Turn 
headlights off. I think it gives us a nice little graph too when this comes out. Oh, this doesn't do a graph, I guess. The snap-on one does a graph. It'll actually show you a ripple like a lab scope. So yeah, now our battery voltage is back up. So I guess I'll get my scope out. And I'll do some voltage drop tests. So guys, I'm hooked up to the battery. I got all the accessories on. And... We are at 12.65 volts. Connected right to the battery. Let's see what the computer is reading. 12.2. But it ain't too bad. I expect some voltage drop with such a high load. So I had the headlights on, the air conditioner, and the rear defroster. Oh, we have the radio on. So now I'm gonna see if we can do an AC ripple. Check. Let's see. Uh, maybe we won't because the alternator is all the way back here in the back. And it's really, really hot right now. I guess what we can do is we can see if we can get to the rear oxygen sensor. Oh, these oxygen sensors aren't even heated. At least this front one isn't. That's odd. Let's see if we can get to the rear one. I might have to get a mat. We'll see if we can back for a bit. Yeah, you can see how the voltage just shoots right back up. Right here's our oxygen sensor, our rear one. Staying pretty much the same. That dropout was me. Because I just did this and I didn't record it a couple seconds ago. So we're on the black wire right there because the black wire is almost always the signal wire on these four wire ones with the black ray. Gray is always ground. White is always your heater circuits. So I have my test light connected to this bolt right here. It's kind of a rusty bolt. But I'm going to stick the test light in here and we're going to ground that oxygen sensor. And we should see it on the scan tool. Here I'm going to hold it because it's hard to make contact. So here we go. I don't know why this piercing probe with this with this test light is always a pain. Come on. Let me make sure my ground's good. Let's try this. I'm sure there's a better place to ground than that test board. Yeah, see, I don't have a good ground. Not pulling it all the way down.
There we go. There, I got it. I just had to play with the ground a little bit. So you can see how that's pulled all the way down and it's staying there. So I got my test plate grounded right here to this bolt, this rusty bolt. And it's going into my piercing probe under there. It's hard, like every time I move it, it wants to go back up. But that confirms that our wire is good. Uh, let's see, I wonder if it changes our fuel trims at all. Oh, let's have my short trim. It doesn't look like it has any effect, probably because it's an open loop. Okay, so we got that, because we were able to make it go right there. Now I could connect this to battery positive. And put it through my test light. And, and make it go rich, but I'm not going to do that. Because we made it go rich earlier driving. It's a bad option sensor. So guys, I got my high amp clamp around the alternator wire, which is down there. I'm assuming it's the alternator wire. And we got 10 amps coming out of it, because every uh, one millivolt is one amp. And I got the other one on battery voltage. The yellow leaves are connected right to the battery. So I'm going to turn the loads on and we'll see what happens. I'll turn the headlights on first. Headlights on. So we got 17 amps. Battery voltage stayed up. Oh, right here. And just turned on. So I guess we'll turn the AC on at this time. Go on high, on recirculate. See what that does. So now we're at 13.4 and staying there, 35 amps. That's working pretty good. Let's try putting the radio on. Well, that didn't increase it much. Let's put the rear defroster on. Now we're down to 13 volts. And we're at 37 amps. I'll have to make sure. I'll have to let this cool down a little bit and make sure that. Because I really wanted to go around both battery cables. But I can't get to the other one without burning myself. battery voltage. Let's turn the radio off. See what we go to. Radio didn't make a difference. We'll turn the headlights off. We're down to 41. Slowly recovering. Let's turn the rear heater off. I need the frosting. Down to 40. 40. 
So like 40 is like pretty much the most that I can handle. So turn my lights back on. So yeah, when I turn the headlights on, it doesn't seem to make much of a difference. Yeah, I think it starts pulling more from the battery, but that's why we're not seeing it at the alternator. It has to be because the battery system voltage is dropping. Yeah, so I bet you it's leaving the battery right now. And that will probably start seeing it. Yeah, so the most this alternator can put out is like 40 amps. So we got a bad alternator. I'll look up the specs, but it's probably like a 115 amp alternator. We should easily be able to keep this system voltage up right now. So I'm gonna save all this. I don't remember what this is. Save it as SC or SL2. SL2. Back to the scanner. Let's save this. Oh, there you go. You can see how much our ignition voltage tank. We went down to 11.9 volts. So, guys, I'm gonna probably order an alternator for this. If it cools down enough, I'll see if I can get a, a capture right from the alternator. See what the ripple looks like. But I won't be able to really do any more testing until then. I figured we do a test on the battery before I leave. Let's see which way is this. Okay, so battery test. No, regular. CCA. And this one's 570. It's hard to pick up. It's easy to read. Hard to pick up by the camera. Need to point it at the battery to see the temperature. It's pretty nice. Oh, that's not good. So guys, we got a bad battery here. I'll bring this out. What I'll do is I'll throw this on the charger tonight just to make sure that the battery isn't just run down from the alternator not working right. But most likely it's bad because usually it'll just say usually they'll just say recharge or something. It'll say like recharging test. Like I've even tested some that were down at like say like a 11.5 volts and you'll test it and it'll say 
uh, that the capacity is still, like say, say it was 570 milliamps and you ran the battery down, it'll still say like 570 or real close to it. But the voltage will be just lower and it'll say recharge. So, I'll put this on the charger tonight. We'll see if it changes tomorrow. So guys, we're back with the Saturn. Got the battery fully charged. I don't know if you guys can see that. I love this 20 amp portable charger. It has really long leads too. But we'll take this off. Set these over here. And we'll put my Snap-on battery tester up. These claws, or jaws, are not as nice as the Odyssey ones. They don't pinch as hard. Hang on, I'm gonna have to fix these. Let me set the camera down. There we go. Got it clamped up. Let's see, battery test. In vehicle. Side post. Regular. Oh, was it 570, I believe? Unless I forgot. I'll go with 570. Turn the headlights on. Turn off headlights. Turn the headlights off. Huh. They are off. Never had this happen before. I've also tested this thing several times against my Odyssey tester. And they test pretty close to the same. Oh man. Try this again. Sure, gone. Yes. There we go. So we'll print this out and we'll compare it to the Odyssey one, which will probably be exactly the same. Paper I said in the back seat. Wonder if it blew away. Ah, oh, here it is. So yesterday we measured 361 cold crank amps. Today we measured 337. So yeah, that's not, it's not too much of a difference right there, so. Two duels, call the bed. So I guess we'll see what the customer wants to do.